Check one, check, check. Welcome back to Let's Talk About That. I'm Seckert and this is... I'm G. Linda. And today's topic will be a fun one. Today we're talking about getting fucked in the drive-thru or fucked in the drive-thru. And we had that experience today. We did. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We, we started off the day by uh, going on a field trip and we had a few errands to run and... We kind of like to treat ourselves once in a while to some McDonald's French fries because they're the best. Best, the best, right? Because mm-hmm. they're gluten free. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing at, at McDonald's that's gluten free. And right. So when you tell me that we're going to McDonald's for fries, I salivate. Yeah. Until we get there. Mm-hmm. The show is not about eating. No. At no. all, no. but it's an experience that we had when we that went there, mm-hmm. and so we. Pulled into the drive-thru and placed our, our order. Uh, it wasn't a hard order. It was a couple of drinks and two large fries, salty hot fries, mm. right? Mm. McDonald's has the best French fries. They do. And uh, I order, ordered a couple cheeseburgers, so, you know, to feed the temple, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And uh, we paid... We should probably say we paid. So the bill was like twenty one fifty. Was it twenty? Twenty one fifty. Twenty one fifty or twenty one twenty five. Twenty one twenty five because you gave me a loony and a quarter. Twenty one twenty five. And so we paid with a fifty dollar bill and a loony. We're in Canada, and a quarter. Mm-hmm. So that's fifty one twenty five, mm-hmm. and it's interesting because people don't know what to do with that in today's day. You know what? It's terrifying. It's terrifying. Right. But to set the stage, we just wanted thirty bucks back. Let's do the math. It's pretty quick. It's pretty simple. Don't got to think about Cause, it because math makes sense, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. math makes sense. Like so, so the, the woman that that took the. Uh, we, we had to drive to window one. And so the cashier was not really young. She was... Oh, she's probably about 40. About 40-ish mm-hmm. type thing. Mm-hmm. And she took the money. I should have brought some money with me. But she took it and she held it in her hands like this, right? <laughs> she's holding it. And I'm watching her through the drive through through the window. And she gets on. She's got a headset on. And she doesn't know what to do with the money. So she had to radio ahead. I don't I guess that would be window two or somewhere else within the building. And I heard her say, I have $51.25. What do I do with this? Because not a lot of people pay with cash anymore, which is sad, right? Sad on every level. Um, but, she, but McDonald's still has a cash drawer. Well, for sure. When you, yeah. I mean, There's no signs there to say they don't accept cash, no, right? No, no. So... She she's on the horn there, and I can only hear the one side of the conversation. And she's like, "Yeah, okay, I can see your head bobbing up and down." And I looked at G. Landa, and, and I'm like, "This is insane," because I'm hearing one side of the conversation, and I'm thinking in my mind she has no clue on what to do with this this cash purchase, or she doesn't have enough change, or she doesn't know how to make change, maybe something to that effect. It's terrifying. So she turns to me and she says, okay, she's very polite. And she says, I'm going to give you your $51.25 bag and I need you to drive to the next window. And they'll... The next window is usually where you pick up your food, which which is where we did get our food. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we get to the next window and there's a, a guy standing there, fairly large guy, big guy, um one of the workers, I suppose, and uh, he probably was in his 30s somewhere mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so I give him the money, or I, I, I proceed to give him the money, <laughs> and this arm comes through the window beside him, and it's this younger girl who I'm assuming was the manager because she was very staunch, 
matter of fact. Very, very matter of fact. But not necessarily polite. Not necessarily polite Zero at politeness. all. No so, smile, no... So I'm giving her... The, I still have the money in my hand, almost like the girl that gave back to me. Got the, got the $50 bill. It's a crisp dollar bill. We just printed it mm -hmm. that day, right? Yeah, okay. And a loony and a quarter. And so I hold it out and to give it to her like this... And this arm whips through. I see the corner of her face, and she grabs the 50 and goes, whoosh, and just pulls it. And I'm like... And she disappears. And she disappears and takes it very a matter of fact and just disappears. I proceed to give the dollar twenty five that's left in my hand to the guy. And so he takes it, and then he kind of watches her, and they're having a bit of a conversation, and... And we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and I don't know, it seemed like eternity went by. Well, probably was like, uh, you know, three minutes or mm -hmm, something, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, she comes back. She gives us... A ten, a, three fives, a loony. Four quarters. Four quarters. She gave us the 30 bucks, but it was 25 and change. That's what it was, uh -huh. right? So it was twenty five dollars in bills, a ten and two fives, and then ten and three fives, and then a handful oh yeah, of three change. Five, sorry, yeah. We ended up with a bigger handful of change <laughs> than, than the buck twenty five, yeah. and which is irrelevant. But I mean, money's money. Not really. It's heavy. It's heavy in a wallet. Nobody wants to have mm -hmm. loose change. Who uses a bunch of change? No, but the, the whole preface of why we did fifty one twenty five was to get thirty bucks back. We were making it easy on them. Apparently not. It was a problem. Um, anyways, point to the story. Is uh, So we take this change and, and whatever, and they give us our bag of food, and we ordered ketchup with the fries. Mm -hmm. And so I asked the server, um, the guy, if remembered ketchup. Yeah, yeah, it's in the bag, right? And it was. It was in the bag. So we pull out, we get back onto the busy... A very, very busy street. Yeah, get back out onto the busy street, and g Landa's hand goes into the bag, and she's like, fuck me, these fries are ice cold. They weren't even warm. They were, they were ice cold. They were ice cold. They had almost started solidifying. They were so cold. And so mm. I'm in a left lane because I want to turn left to go to our next destin our next errand, uh... G. Landa says, <laughs> tell her what you said. I am not happy. We have to take these back. I cannot eat these. Can I've been you... looking forward to this for two hours. I'm not accepting this. We're going back. And it's starting to be rush hour traffic. Yeah. And we're going from one super busy okay, but street get into actual over character, to the way another. You, the way you were in the car. You know what? I wanted to cry. Okay. No, I don't. Mm. She totally come unglued. <laughs> I did. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. It's fucking bullshit. Fucking blah, blah, blah. Bleep, 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 bleep. We're fucking taking them back. And I looked at her, because I'm not a take her back kind of guy. And I looked at her and I said, really? Like, are you serious? Because I'm way in the left lane. And now I to go back, I got to get over three lanes in rush hour traffic. Yeah, but you were eating the hamburgers already. He had already started eating the cheeseburgers because they're warm, and I have nothing but a cold they coke warm. and they cold fries. Hot. They were hot. I know that. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, "Well, you wouldn't take them back, would you?" And I went, "No, I I wouldn't personally." If I had something else warm to eat, I wouldn't have yeah. taken the fries said, back either. But, but if you want to take them back, let's mm -hmm. take them back. Mm -hmm. So I proceeded to shoulder check three times to get over. <laughs> And then she says to me, well, you can just go up here and turn you. And she goes, you know what? I'll just shut up because you're driving. And I'm like, no, yeah, I'll spin around, blah, blah, blah. Because right, it's whatever. That's my, that's, you know what? It, that, that's in episode three or four or five, something like that. The whole who's got control of the car. Is this going to be a series? Yeah. Anyway, uh, we get back to McDonald's. And as we're, as we're pulling back into the establishment, G. Linda says to me, well, do you just want to go through the drive through Like, you got this, right? <laughs> no, I said. Oh yeah. No, I yeah. said I can do the talking if you want. I'm driving the car. I know I could have yelled. Yeah. So should I say my wife's got something to say to you? My voice carries. <laughs> so I had envisioned that she, I would pull in and she would because she knows I'm not a take her back kind of person <laughs> ever, ever. And 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 you know I I had envisioned that I'd pull in, she'd get out of the car, she'd go in. 
and I would just see windows shattering, you know, from <laughs> from the outside of the establishment in a safe zone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but no, that wasn't the case. I said, yeah, you know what? We'll go through the drive through No problem. No problem. It was cold out. It was cold really? out. Nobody wanted to get out of the car. Uh, okay, so... So I turn back into the drive-thru and go to the first, there's a car in front of us. I, I, I get my turn. I go up to the first, win, or the first, to the sign where you order. Welcome to McDonald's. May I help you? Are you, are you a loyalty rewards member? No, no, to all the above. And, and yes, you can help us. Yeah. And I says, I, we were just in the drive-thru five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, whatever it was. And we ordered uh, two drinks two burgers and two large fries and the I, the fries are ice cold. I want hot fries. Mm-hmm. I think something to that effect. That's fair. Wasn't ignorant. Nope. She goes, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Just, uh, what did she say? Come to the... Come to the first window. Come to the first window. So this is the lady that, the 40-ish lady mm-hmm. uh, that didn't know what to do with the money in the first place. So we get to the window and she asked, um, and she, you asked if we, if she wanted our cold bag of fries just to do a yeah, test or something, and right? She, she apologized. She said, I'm so sorry for that. And mm-hmm. she thanked us. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, well, do you want the fries? And, and she's like, no, you know what? They're just going to throw them in the garbage anyway. So you can just, just keep them mm-hmm. or whatever. So, okay. But I'm going to get you. She goes, hot fries can take about six minutes. Mm-hmm. So I'll get you to pull up to the next window mm-hmm. and... <laughs> <laughs> we'll go from there. Right on. So we go to the second window, and guess who's at the window? The manager. The manager. And she got her whole face right in the window. She says, what seems to be the problem? And it's just a little bit, mm. mm-hmm. It was rude. They said, rude. well, we got cold fries. We want hot fries. And she says, well, that's going to take about 10 minutes. So you're going to have to pull up over to the wait area here, and it'll be about 10 minutes. No problem. Well, wait. Yeah. Do you want the fries? No. No apology. No apology. <laughs> no, nothing. It's it's now my problem. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're, we, You feel like you're an inconvenience. Yeah. It's like we're... we're and, and I get it. It's McDonald's. It's not some high-end restaurant. But you expect a level of service. You expect hot fries. You expect hot food. You a level of cold, service. Yeah. You expect cold drinks that, that aren't flat. Um and we were an inconvenience to her. Completely. But it, but it's funny, too, right? Because, uh, you know, so we, we pulled up to the weight area and <clears throat> I had my window down about that much, and which isn't a whole bunch, right? I had it down about that much. And, yeah, it's cold out, but I had my window down. And about, I don't know, four or five minutes went by, maybe something like that. And all of a sudden, there was this bag at the window <laughs> being stuffed through the hole. No knocking on the window. Hey, Nothing. sir, here your you fries go. are ready. No, here you go. That was it. Here you go. <laughs> right through the window. All right. Thank you. No, you know, thank you. No apology. I said thank you. Yeah. And and she did not. Did not. She had a scowl on her face. Yeah, turned around like, and hustled back. Yeah. You've wrecked my day. Yeah. And we were very polite about it because, you know, a lot of times people become unglued when they don't get the customer service they expect at a grocery store, a mall, um, like a store in a mall. And um, some people feel that it's okay to rip um, um, people the off. cashier or, or the <laughs> store clerk to, to, oh, come unglued on, rip, yeah. to come unglued on them. And it's not okay. And we were very respectful with, with the manager and with the two other people at the window. Um, they had no right to not apologize because um, um, we expect that they're going to make good on yeah. our complaint. Yeah, but they just, they just don't do their job. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's the service industry. You're paying for said service, inflation, yada, yada, whatever. Mm-hmm. You're paying for a service, give the service or mm-hmm. don't be in business. And that's why you tip people. You tip people for service, like in a restaurant. I would never tip that. No. No. But you know what? There's there's restaurants and um, takeout restaurants um, mm. that have this automatic tip thing that comes up on your on their keypad. When you're picking up a pizza yeah. or picking up something. They're pressuring you into leaving them a tip and they didn't do anything. But they don't even give you an option to no. to it's it's fifteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty five and it has to fit in there. Yeah. And and there's sometimes there's not even an option to say no tip. I don't want to tip. I had terrible service. But why would you tip yeah. at, when you're picking up a I pizza th- that you ordered? There's nothing for them to Yeah, I think tipping 
I think that's a whole n- another episode because there's a whole bunch of... Remember, we looked at that stuff, and do you okay. remember... Okay, so we're going to cut this out I, of this I, one? I think maybe. Okay. Uh, because, we, because we've got all those shorts and stuff that we wanted okay. to. Okay, okay. You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah. that business owner that said, your pricing is going to go up if mm-hmm. if you don't tip well? Okay, so we're going to cut. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> That's a whole nother... Well, that's fine. We'll, we'll probably leave that in, too. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, the point is that that the level of service in the service industry is appalling. It's declining. It, it yeah, it's disgusting. It really is. So why does that happen? Why, why, where? Like I, I remember back in the day, because I'm old as dirt. Um, mm-hmm. The drive up windows when you actually had, you know, the servers coming out of Dairy Queen or whatever on roller skates and and put. A&W. And W and hanging hanging your tray on your window, mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. back in the day, and with a smile and you know nice cute outfit and whatever. But but people, I mean times were a lot easier back then. I don't want to go down that road, but um, times were a lot, uh, much more simpler back then. But the level of service was high end. Everywhere you went. So the level of service when yeah. we, after we were done the fries and we went to, to get gas yeah. at the gas bar and it was busy in there um, mm-hmm. while I was standing there waiting for, for you to fill up the, the vehicle, there was lots of, lots of action in, in, the, um, in the gas bar um, and there was a kid that was supposed to be running till number two, mm-hmm. standing with his hands in his pockets behind the counter talking to his buddy and the one gal at the at the till was taking all of these customers through there's three or four people behind um waiting right. to right. pay and so once you were done filling up and i was next in line mm-hmm. to have my my gas rung in he just looked at me he he, he his friend walked away he's standing at the till and he just looked at me no can i help you mm-hmm. um next person in line none of that he just stood there with his hands in his pockets a little toque on his head and he had fluorescent blue hair and so uninviting so you know thank you for shopping here come on i'll take you you know how's your day none of that none of this nanya and he just stood there staring at me like i'm supposed to come into his lineup now Mm -hmm. and i just looked at him and i said no thank you and i stayed in the lineup that i was in so uninviting and so rude right why do you think that is? I don't know, and I, I sometimes I have to think. Okay, what's going on? What's going wrong in his day? Um, clearly, he's not happy that he hates his job. I don't know. Has no respect for his job. Has probably. no respect, and, yeah. and maybe the maybe the gas bar doesn't do a lot of customer service yeah. training with these young kids because he was probably eighteen years old. Yeah. Um, so you know what? I think it's an interesting, uh, uh, not a dynamic, but a, I'm, I'm just I'm thinking on the fly here. Um, I've always, I always used to say the most underpaid people in, in all of society is people that are in the, in the public service industry, Mm -hmm. like the the fast food workers and the restaurants and cashiers, cashiers, the hotel business and the caterers and all that stuff. Cause they put up with the most bullshit. And they, and and they're usually really underappreciated. Underpaid. Mm -hmm. They're underpaid. Underpaid and underappreciated. Yeah. Right. Um, and I used to really, really believe in that. You know, because you don't need some oil tycoon CEO or CFO, you know, pulling in three, three and a half, you know, hundred thousand dollars a year, and and this this person's working way harder than that person has ever worked in their lives, probably, probably, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but that's changing, in my opinion, because we as a society are killing the service industry. They're not working hard, and they're not working anymore. So. Maybe they've caught on to the fact that they're underpaid or something. I don't know. So they'll work at 20%? Something like that. I'm not really sure why, but, mm, uh, you know, everybody works hard for the few dollars that they do have, and there's value to that. So when you go out to order fast food or to buy something in a store, you expect to be appreciated that you're spending their your money at their establishment because if the if the establishment didn't have customers yeah. they don't have a job yeah and i know this is beating an old dead horse in in a way but um 
<laughs> there's some humor in it. You know, you know what I love about uh, you can kind of fuck with the young kids, right? That are in the in the workforce, and it's like they don't know how to dial a rotisserie phone, right? Rotary. Just. What did I say? Rotisserie? <laughs> rotisserie. Well, you know what? Mine was rotisserie. I could put a chicken on it. <laughs> uh, rotary phone. Yeah. Uh, fuck rotisserie. <laughs> um, but you, if you do give them the 5125, like in our case, they have no clue what to do with that because they don't have their calculator in front of them. They can't do simple math. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's appalling. It's, mm-hmm. it's so scary mm-hmm. that this is our future, that future leaders it's crazy yeah but in all fairness a lot of these young kids never do have cash it's all debit and credit it's it's it, yeah we're, we're moving towards a cashless society well we are but we're not there yet no we're not there. like how many kids do you know <clears throat> i have a, i have a kid a child i have a few of them mm-hmm. um I, I had a child for Many years, it blew my mind. They can't even tell time on a regular wall clock, mm-hmm. not a digital clock, mm-hmm. but one with two hands and a second hand, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No idea mm-hmm. what what ten fifteen looks like. Mm-hmm. Quarter after. Mm-hmm. Quarter at what? What is quarter after? You know, they, I don't know. They have no clue. That's because you're all this dirt. <laughs> but that's that's. I mean. I don't know. To me, that's a skill. I suppose that's mm-hmm. that's. It's not a. Uh, it, it's not a wasted skill. That's that skill should be known mm-hmm. in all of society mm-hmm. to be able to read a clock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Does that not make sense? What what's going to happen? So the power goes out. The power goes out, which happens a lot. Mm-hmm. So the microwave doesn't. The power work. goes out, and they have no clue what time it is. Mm-hmm. Zero clue. Look at the clock on the wall. The clock on the wall is going because it's got a battery in it, right? Mm-hmm. It means and nothing. It means they nothing. have no clue. Um, the, the biggest thing they're concerned with is their phone is dying, and they can't plug it in. And they, sometimes some of them can't even figure that out. <laughs> well, I, I need to plug my phone in, and they still plug it in, and there's no power in the house. <laughs> Good luck with that. Well, how come it's not charging? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The I, same I'm, reason you can't tell time right I'm now. I'm going into a rabbit hole. Uh, I just think the younger generation, society-wise, and you know what? McDonald's is a big corporation. Mm-hmm. They need to revisit their training policy or something. Mm-hmm. They need to be more glued to it or something. Um because without good service, they all have no customers. That's really at the, the end deal right there, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm, I'm just one Karen doing yeah. the complaining, right? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Um, customer service is really important. It is important. Very, very yeah. important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd be interested to know what you people think of uh, all the 55 of you out there. 57. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got to stop saying that. Why? Well. I don't know. I just change it up. Uh, what's your experience with getting fucked in the drive-through? Mm-hmm. Right? Because everybody does it, and it's actually a, a bumper sticker saying in in our house, <laughs> even playing cards, I can get a bad get a bad card or something. I just got fucked in the drive-through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a real thing. It's yeah. a it's a pandemic. Maybe it is. It is. Anyways, leave a comment. Looking forward to to your comments. Like, share, subscribe. And uh, I think we've nailed this topic. And we did have really hot, really hot fries today, so it was worth it. How many years are we going to go on doing the nail and the topic thing? Oh, for now. Make sure you put that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for now. I don't um, think we actually, I don't think we have nailed this topic. If we nailed the topic, it wouldn't be a problem anymore. But it's clearly still a problem. No, but, but that's because McDonald's uh, that's because McDonald's executives aren't watching this. And if they did, they'd come up with a good policy manual to change. Yeah, but the McDonald's executives are twelve years old. <laughs> yeah, they probably are. They're probably gamers. Gamers, yeah, probably Fortnite, right? Yeah, that's the only game I know. What? That's the only game I know. I don't game. Remember Dig Dug? Nope. Mm. Hmm. Okay. 
Tetris. So we're not going to nail? Pac-Man. Go ahead and say it. Okay, you can close the show. <laughs> you know what? I'll challenge you to close the show with a new line. Go ahead. Close the show. It's all yours. The floor is yours. Thanks for joining us. Um, make sure and live your best life. Look forward to chatting next time. No, that's terrible. It kind of was. <laughs> no, because nobody chats with me except you. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, and please feel free to share your comments, like, subscribe, and um, make sure and live your best life. Yeah. Uh, remember, always look within to when you're about to help somebody out. Look within, because it's there. Um, take care of yourself, and be kind. I do want to say one thing. Um, we are, we are uh, toying with the idea of of having people to do a live show and to have people call in. We're toying with that, right? You're looking at me like we haven't talked about this. We haven't talked about this. Okay, so we're going to be toying with the idea. Mm, that means we'll be talking yeah. about it. Uh, I think that would be very inter interesting, very interactive. And uh, yeah, we'll get mom to call. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to talking Looking forward. to you. <laughs> See you later. Over and out.